Beards and attire of Jehovah's Witnesses It is rare to see one of Jehovah's Witnesses sporting a beard, and almost unheard of in English-speaking countries for a bearded brother to hold a position of responsibility. Yet the standard regarding beards has been rarely discussed in any watchtower. Watchtower guidance against beards is limited to vague statements, anecdotes regarding people that remove their beard on conversion, and a lack of bearded witnesses in watchtower publications. Rather than enforced by direct decree, it has been adhered to as a result of social identification pressure. This standard extends back to the time of Rutherford. Illustrations in Watchtower publications never show a beard on modern day Jehovah's Witnesses. This picture shows a typical Watchtower congregation of clean shaven men in ties. On the other hand, if a worldly person is represented in a negative light, then it is not uncommon for a beard to be present. Specific mention of beards. One of the few mentions of whether a beard is appropriate for Jehovah's Witnesses appeared subtly in a 1962 watchtower. It says, Likewise, it is possible to spend valuable time speculating on matters concerning the future. One might ask, In what year will Armageddon begin? Will there be factories and machines after Armageddon? Will men wear beards again? The question of whether men would have beards again in the new system indicates that brothers were not bearded in the congregations at this time. In 1968, it was directed that beards would detract from the Watchtower message. The May 12 Watchtower says, In recent years in many lands, a beard or long hair on a man attracts immediate notice and may, in the minds of the majority, classify such a person undesirably with extremists or as rebels against society. God's ministers want to avoid making any impression that would take attention away from their ministry or hinder anyone from listening to the truth. A vague directive to shave appears in the 2002 ministry school book. For men, a neat personal appearance may include being clean shaven. In areas where moustaches are widely viewed as dignified, any who wear these should keep them neatly trimmed. For assignments at conventions and assemblies, specific instruction is given against using brothers with beards, such as the following from a talk outline in 2009, which said, Dress and grooming. Those giving talks should wear suits. If your talk calls for an interview or a demonstration, please do not use any brother who wears a beard, and make sure your participants are aware of the importance of good grooming and modest dress. More common discussion regarding beards appears in the form of experiences of worldly men removing their beards on conversion. These experiences have appeared regularly over the decades, such as the following examples. I shaved off my beard and got a haircut, and Sue bought a few dresses. Four months later we were married, and in April 1976 we were baptised in symbol of our dedication to serve God. A Bible study was started with him, and as Bible truth began to affect his heart, the changes he made were visible to all. One of the first evidences of his change was that he cut short his long hair and shaved off his scraggly beard. However, after the young man received the book, there was a remarkable transformation in the lad. He shaved off his beard, cut his hair, and stopped using drugs. Correspondence guidelines from 2007 includes beards under a section on appropriate attire. It points to the following articles for answers. Awake, 1979. But more helpful than a specific rule in this regard will be application of the principle behind the biblical statement quoted above. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other person. The same counsel applies when it comes to wearing beards or certain articles of clothing. In some locations, people still view beards as identifying rebellious elements in society. Watchdown 1975 Not wanting to be responsible for even one person's being stumbled so as to miss the way to everlasting life, this New Kingdom publisher shaved off his beard. Would you be willing to do the same or to make similar adjustments if your appearance gave the wrong impression in a certain community. Watchdown 1973 
Suppose that you as a man lived in Israelite times under the law and did not like a beard. Perhaps you liked the way Egyptians looked, clean-shaven. What would you do? Would you exercise your personal right to shave? No, for you would not have such a right. You would have to wear a beard because the law commanded all males, you must not cut your side locks short around, and you must not destroy the extremity of your beard. It is strange how the 1973 Watchtower discussion against beards picks the example of how Israelite men had to have a beard. The article also said that men should not dress to appear like women. What could be more masculine than a beard? Whilst the point is that a beard is unacceptable in modern society, and Jehovah's Witnesses should not insist on their right to have one, the lines of reasoning are much more effectively used to encourage men to wear a beard. The most direct discussion I have found regarding beards is a three-page Watchtower letter dated February 24, 2009, that was in response to a brother's personal request for information. The brother writes asking what the branch thinks about beards, since they are common on professional men, and there is no direct guidance in Watchtower publications. What stands out in Watchtower's detailed response is that there is no compelling reasoning given for a beard being wrong. It uses nothing other than the line of reasoning that brothers must be modest, and some people may view a beard as immodest. Yet the message is strong that a beard could cause stumbling, and it is a small thing to adhere to the guideline against beards. The response contains the following interesting comment. Therefore, it would not determine a person's salvation if he chose to wear a beard, nor would it prevent him from getting baptised sharing in field ministry or enrolling in the theocratic school. Regarding positions of responsibility, it indicates a beard is not acceptable, yet in a very vague way. It says if a Christian man is reaching out for special privileges and yet desires to wear a beard, he might ask himself whether wearing even a neatly trimmed beard could become a matter of disturbance or controversy in the congregation. If most Christian males in a congregation or community have refrained from wearing beards for the scriptural reasons outlined above, it is reasonable to expect that those taking the lead as ministerial servants or elders would be exemplary in this respect. Despite showing that beards were normal attire for Christians in the Bible, and acknowledging that beards are now a common and acceptable fashion in many parts of the world, the letter concludes with the passive-aggressive suggestion that a brother who chooses to maintain a clean-shaven appearance for the sake of the good news manifests that same self-sacrificing spirit of Timothy. Watchtower also uses illustrations for subliminal influence. While some illustrations of the new system include Bible characters with beards, The following examples show newly resurrected ones with beards, but as they learn God's requirements, they are later clean-shaven. It is unrealistic that in the new system, men will be expected to shave on the basis that this is what the governing body understands as an acceptable standard of fashion. But on a base level, this picture triggers in the witness mind that by shaving, this man has accepted Bible principles, despite no Bible instruction to shave. When this J.W. Facts article was first published in 2013, Jehovah's Witnesses had been mostly beardless for almost a century. In the Watchtower's 2016 September issue, a slightly softened stance indicated that beards may be acceptable in some cultures. In some cultures, a neatly trimmed beard may be acceptable and respectable and it may not detract at all from the kingdom message. In fact, some appointed brothers have beards. Even so, some brothers might decide not to wear a beard. In other cultures or localities, beards are not the custom and are not considered acceptable for Christian ministers. In fact, having one may hinder a brother from bringing glory to God by his dress and grooming and his being irreprehensible. What cultures, by whom and why, this vagueness still leaves little room for beards, particularly where there are overseas strongly opinionated on the topic. Changing standard. The Watchtower indication that avoidance of beards is because they are a sign of cultural rebelliousness 
led me to assume that this stance must have started during the hippie era of the 1960s. However, the tide against beards had already started with Rutherford, Watchtower's second leader. Rutherford's clean-shaven appearance and imposition upon other brothers was a way to distance the religion from Russell's leadership. Many did not accept Rutherford as Watchtower's rightful second leader, and Rutherford took insult with brothers' sporting beards in imitation of Russell. This is explained in the book Thirty Years a Watchtower Slave, recounting an experience from 1925. An amusing incident took place at the time of the judge's visit. The director of our German branch, as had many before him, had grown a large beard patterned after Charles T. Russell's beard. The judge did not want anything at all to remain which might remind him of Russell, not even the cultivation of a beard. So sitting at the table for dinner one night, within my earshot, the director asked the judge for one more large rotary press. The judge said nothing for a while, merely ate. So suddenly he looked up, his eyes pinned severely on the director's huge beard and said, I will buy you the press if you take that thing off, pointing to the beard. It surely shocked the director's sensibilities, but he meekly heeded the warning and soon shamefacedly appeared minus the beard. The 1974 yearbook verifies Schnell's account, which says, But more equipment was needed. For that reason, Brother Balsright asked Brother Rutherford for permission to buy a rotary press. Brother Rutherford saw the necessity and agreed, but on one condition. He had noticed that over the years Brother Balzerite had grown a beard very similar to the one that had been worn by Brother Russell. His example soon caught on, for there were others who also wanted to look like Brother Russell. This could give rise to a tendency toward creature worship, and Brother Rutherford wanted to prevent this. So during his next visit, within hearing of all the Bible House family, he told Brother Balzerite that he could buy the Rotary Press but only on the condition that he shave off his beard. In more recent times, Watchtower attempts to portray the change in a somewhat different manner, relating it to changing fashion. Awake 2000, January 22 says, With the fall of the Roman Empire, however, the beard once again prevailed, doing so for 1,000 years until the second half of the 17th century, when shaving became the vogue. The clean-shaven look continued through the 18th century, but then by the mid to late 19th century, the pendulum began to swing the other way. Hence, photographs of C.T. Russell, the first president of the Watchtower Society, and fellow Christian W.E. Van Amberg show both men wearing stylish, well-trimmed beards that were dignified and appropriate for their time. In the early part of the 20th century, however, shaving enjoyed a resurgence of popularity that has endured in most countries to our day. While accurate the popularity of the beard veins and rises, this reasoning does not justify placing upon it a total taboo, as a beard is perfectly acceptable in corporate Western society. When the above article was, was written in 2000, I was dealing with corporate leaders and software professionals in Australia, and it was common for them to have beards. At the time of writing this article in 2013, the global software company I work for has many professional employees with beards. Beards are not a sign of hippies and rebellion. They appear on royalty, politician, statesmen, international public icons and captains of industry, such as James Cameron, Richard Branson, Alan Sugar, George Lucas and James Kahn. Yet Jehovah's Witnesses are still expected to shave on the baseless grounds of it being a corporate standard and beards as being rebellious. Jesus Beard Between 1930 and 1968, Watchtower went as far as to present Jesus in all publication pictures as clean-shaven and with short hair. A question from readers asks, The traditional picture of Jesus shows him with long hair and a beard, but the Watchtower publications illustrate him as beardless and with short hair, which is correct. Answer. The later Watchtower publications show Jesus as beardless and with short hair because he is shown that way in representation of him that are older than the traditional effeminate looking picture. 
Since the Bible does not describe Jesus' facial appearance or indicate he had a beard of length, we follow the oldest archaeological evidence rather than the later traditional view that makes Jesus appear effeminate and sallow and sanctimonious. Some use Isaiah 50 verse 6 as proof that Jesus had a beard. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. This may have been literally fulfilled in a typical way upon Isaiah, foreshadowing the shameful insults and reproaches to be heaped upon the servant class, the primary one of whom is Jesus. Each one of the servant class suffers reproaches, but not necessarily all of the ones he specified. The record shows Jesus was whipped, slapped and spat on, but no mention is made of bead plucking. If it had happened, why would it not have been named along with the other abuses and insults? This changed again with another question from readers in 1968, which explained that Jesus did have a beard. When Jesus Christ was a man on earth, did he wear a beard? Biblical evidence is the most reliable testimony to be found on this question, and a recent careful review of what it says indicates that Jesus did indeed have a beard. One must wonder why Bible evidence and Holy Spirit had led the governing body to the opposite conclusion when introducing new light against Jesus' beard in 1954. Unscriptural the comings and goings of Jesus' beard reveals how the Watchtower selectively manipulates information to their means. The 1954 question from readers went into great detail to prove that Jesus did not have a beard, yet in 1968 a similar level of detail was able to prove to Jehovah's Witnesses that Jesus did have a beard. Scriptures are forced for meaning. A good example of this is how Watchtower uses Leviticus 19 verse 28 to argue that a tattoo is inappropriate for a Christian, but ignores verse 27, which says it is wrong to shave a beard. Leviticus 19, 27 and 28 says, You must not shave the hair on the side of your head or disfigure the edges of your beard. You must not make cuts in your flesh for a dead person, and you must not make tattoo markings on yourself. Notice how Watchtower presents that the Mosaic Law's prohibition against tattoos still lends weight for Christians. The Awake 2003 says, Significantly, the Mosaic Law forbade God's people to tattoo themselves. Said Leviticus 19.28, You must not make cuts in your flesh for a deceased soul, and you must not put tattoo marking upon yourself. While Christians today are not under the law of Moses, the prohibition it laid on tattooing is sobering. Whilst claiming Leviticus 19.28 to be significant when Christians decide against getting tattoos, verse 27 is treated as, as irrelevant when Watchtower directs followers to cut their beards. Watchtower's requirement to shave goes against their usual line of reasoning behind other doctrine. If they followed the reasoning used for why Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to celebrate birthdays, shaving would be forbidden on the following basis. 1. Men naturally grow beards, being the design of God. 2. The Bible provides the examples of Israelite and Christian men with beards as a guide for us to follow today. 3. The Mosaic Law forbade people from shaving, highlighting God's feelings against men being clean-shaven. See Leviticus 19.27. 4. Shaving is effeminate and a homosexually inspired androgynous fashion. 5. Shaving has pagan roots. It was likely first practiced by Egyptian priests and later promoted by Alexander the Great. During Christian times, Christians wore beards while the pagan Romans, such as Pontius Pilate, who authorised the impalement of Jesus, were clean-shaven. Dress and grooming Beads are not the only area of grooming controlled by Watchtower. Attire at meetings and when preaching is strictly regulated. Organised to do God's will states on page 138, Hence, when we are getting ready to participate in the field ministry or to assemble for worship at congregation meetings, circuit assemblies and larger congregations, 
we should have in mind what the scriptures say about physical cleanliness and modest appearance, so as to honour and glorify Jehovah always. The same would appear when visiting any of the branch offices of Jehovah's Witnesses. Remember, the name Bethel means house of God. In 2007, the Kingdom Ministry directed, Therefore, even during leisure time, such as when going out to eat after the program, we should dress as befits ministers who are in the city for the purpose of attending a Christian convention and should not wear such clothing as jeans, shorts or t-shirts. Clothing for meetings and preaching is expected to be modest and of corporate standard and includes wearing a tie. The expectations go beyond modern corporate standards as most corporate positions no longer require a tie. When I was living on sweltering tropical Thursday Island at the northern tip of Australia, we were expected to wear a tie when on congregation duties. The local bank manager commented to me that this was inappropriate for the region and no one at the bank was expected to wear a tie. Visitors to Bethel are to abide by the same strict code as when attending meetings. As illustrated in the 2008 brochure Dress and Grooming for Visitors Touring Bethel, Collared t-shirts are not considered appropriate for brothers visiting Bethel. This is an excessive level of control, considering Bethel is predominantly an office and printing factory. Sisters face the same controlling attitude towards fashion, being expected to wear modest dresses or skirts to the Kingdom Hall, Bethel and preaching, but not trousers. This is counterintuitive, since formal business slacks are common corporate attire and more modest than a dress. Extremely tight pants on men came under attack by governing body member Anthony Morris during a comment to Rome Bethel on the 20th of January 2014 as a disgusting, homosexually inspired fashion. What's wrong is this extremely tight pants. It's not appropriate for a Christian. And I want you brothers to think about this. Do you remember that many, many, many homosexuals are in the clothing industry and doing the designing? Don't you know they love it when you're wearing tight pants? Oh yeah, you chuckle. I don't think it's funny. I think it's disgusting. The Circuit Overseer Program for Elders in 2015-16 contained a section explaining that brothers sporting a metrosexual look of tight-fitting clothing or sisters with revealing or tight clothing are excluded from qualifying for Bethel and may even be excluded from preaching in the Kingdom Ministry. It says, Any individual who manifests the aforementioned extremes in dress and grooming or who displays gender-blurring characteristics should not be recommended for Bethel service or the School for Kingdom Evangelizers. Furthermore, if the body of elders agrees that a brother or sister is blatantly and deliberately ignoring repeated counsel and his or her dress and grooming is disturbing to the congregation, the elders may determine that the person no longer qualifies to share in the ministry. The September 2016 Watchtower article, Does Your Style of Dress Glorify God?, ironically states, Jehovah's Witnesses should feel grateful that they are not burdened with detailed regulations on clothing. How grateful we are that Jehovah does not burden us with detailed lists of regulations about our dress and grooming. This is a surprising statement considering how pedantic and controlling Watchtower is regarding dress and grooming. In fact, the true irony is that the article had just presented a list of regulations about dress and grooming. Paragraph 3 says, from God's stated direction about clothing, we clearly see that God is not pleased with styles of dress that feminize men, that make women look like men, or that make it hard to see the difference between men and women. Paragraph 5. The principles that we glean from God's word should move us to avoid wearing clothing that is tight-fitting, revealing, or sexually provocative. That would rule out wearing clothing that exposes or accentuates private parts of our anatomy. Paragraph 8. Even as we check in and out of a motel, as well as when we enjoy leisure time before and after convention sessions, we want to avoid an appearance that is overly casual or slovenly. Paragraph 12. Hence, 
Our brothers and sisters appreciate it when we refrain from wearing clothes that are so tight or so loose that they are revealing. Also, when relaxing at the beach or at a swimming pool, the style of swimwear we use should be modest. Paragraph 16. Many stores cater to popular fashions, so it may take time and effort to find modest skirts, dresses and blouses, or suits and slacks that are not too tight. Paragraph 17. In other cultures or localities, beards are not the custom and are not considered acceptable for Christian ministers. Excessive control. Excessive behavioural control is an indication of a totalitarian regime and common amongst religions using persuasive coercion. I have read experiences of brothers being marked for refusing to shave their beard. In one of my congregations, a brother in his 50s was told he would not be made an elder for as long as he refused to shave his beard. Throughout the entire history of the Bible, God's followers wore beards. Jesus would have had a beard, as did Watchtower founder Charles Russell. It is remarkable Watchtower feels justified to shirk Bible examples when imposing such rigid control over its members' choice of fashion, and that congregations of beardless men are so universal amongst Jehovah's Witnesses simply through subtle Watchtower suggestion. This exemplifies the level of peer pressure witnesses undergo to conform. This excessive control that goes beyond or even against biblical examples brings to mind several scriptures. 1 Corinthians 4, 6 and 7 Do not go beyond the things that are written in order that you may not be puffed up individually in favour of the one against the other. Luke 22, 25 and 26 But he said to them, The kings of the nations lord it over them, and those having authority over them are called benefactors. You, though, are not to be that way. Matthew fifteen three and 9. In reply, he said to them, Why is it you also overstepped the commandment of God because of your tradition? And so you have made the word of God invalid because of your tradition. In vain they keep worshipping me, because they teach commands of men as doctrines.